today I'm just going to be making, I'll just bring you back to me here, zoom out. I'm going to make um, a couple of cuff bracelets. I've got a gold one here. Now this one I bought, I couldn't find a gold one online and so this one actually came with the, like a furry um, animal uh, fabric on it, which I just peeled off. This one is a, an actual blank. When you buy these blanks, just make sure they're ones that have got the channel so that then you can get your um, paint skin to fit nice and neatly in there and it looks um, really finished. And I'm also going to do um, a couple of necklaces. So these little glass pieces are called cabochons. I love that word, cabochon. And I'm going to stick that onto the paint skin um, let it dry, then cut around it, and then pop it into the um, blank little tray. They call that a tray. Um, and with the square one that I've got, I don't have a cabochon that fits that. Um, I'm sure you can get them. So what I'll do with that one is I'll actually cut the uh, skin, fit this, glue the skin in, and then I'll resin over it with a dome. I'll, but I won't actually show you that one this time. Okay, so we've got to work out how much we need of the skin. So I've already measured up here that it's, um, I always go to the 10 so that I can be accurate. It's very hard to be accurate if you go from the, me the, the beginning of your measuring tape. So I'll just pop that in there to there. So that's three centimetres. And then when I measure from, oops, then I start with the 10 be better if I had a cloth measuring tape instead of this metal one. Bring it around and that's 16. So exactly 16. So 3 by 16. So here's my um, paint skin. So I'm looking at that now. Just trying to keep myself in shot for you. Um, just got to work out which section I want. So I can go this way. Or I can go through this way. So if I go this way, obviously, uh, the beginning and end will have some of these areas that are just more of the black with a little bit of the um, burst orange, metallic burst orange. Or if I go this way, the whole thing will be like that. Decisions, decisions. So let's have a look. So if I put that on there. Going to drape that around that would be really nice but it would also be nice if I go this way Oops. If I go around like that hmm. I think I quite like it like that with the um, that little bit at the beginning and the end. So I think I'll cut it that way, cut it this way. So we've got to make sure we're nice and straight. So that's not quite straight where I've cut it with the Stanley knife. So I'm just going, I'm going to use a um, guillotine here, but you can just get a ruler, a nice straight edge ruler like this one I've got here. Get your edge and then get your little um, knife, exacto knife, or craft knife, and just cut it straight with that and I'm just going to use my little guillotine so just pop that on there and there and then hopefully I'll end up with a nice straight line Okay, so that should be close enough to straight now. So I'm going to do three bracelets anyway. So I shall. Um, 
and I've got to be three centimeters wide. Make sure I'm nice and straight. Okay, so this has got the sizes um, down the side here. So from there to there, that's one centimeter, two, three. And going the other way as well. So that line there should be my three centimeters. Am I going to trust that? If I need to trim a little bit off, I still can. So I think I'll take it up to the line there. And having a look there, I think I'd, that would look really nice coming through here with the hearts coming through, the blue, the green, the orange, and then the ends. And then I'll center this piece here in the middle of the bracelet. Okay, so let's see if we end up with three centimeters. Fingers crossed, guys. <gasps> Might have just ruined the whole thing. Let's see how we go. Perfect fit. Look at that. Lovely. So as I say, I just want to work out, basically get the center of this without marking it. So about there. And the center of the bracelet, which is around about there. I might just measure that. So it'll be... Um, Start from 10, half raise 8, which is about there. Very approximate. I could mark that with a, um, a pen, but I'm not going to. So about there. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. So then I'll just have to trim... Get it nice and straight if I can. And usually when you're gluing this on, I find that it um, it could stretch a little bit anyway. So it looks about right, doesn't it? It looks really pretty, I think. So I'm going to trim that off here at the end. So I'm just going to fold that in, get my little knife. Actually, I'll probably just take it off, it'll be easier. So just push it in, so you can see what I'm doing there. And I'm sure there's probably people that'll be going, oh, it would have been easier to have done whatever. But, you know, we all have our own ways of doing things. So that's pushed in there, I'll bring it out, I'll cut along that line. I've got some little nail scissors here. I can actually pop it underneath the guillotine again. So I can see where my line is there. Get it nice and straight. Nice and straight there. Yeah, that looks about right. And line that up again. And if I've accidentally cut a bit too much off, as I say, the, the skin can stretch a little bit anyway, so it'll stretch to fit. Okay, so the next step is just to check that it's going to fit in there. Nicely. Yep, it might be a tiny bit big, but I think it'll be right. I don't think I started that tight enough there. So next, I'm going to get some of this. This is the glue that I've seen everybody using. So it's a diamond glaze. It's a water-based um, glue, so you don't have to worry about it getting on your fingers. It's not going to stick your fingers together like a super glue does. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put 
a bead of this along the edges. I don't want too much because I don't want it squishing out, but it doesn't matter if it does squish out. Really doesn't make any difference because you can just wipe it off. So I'm going to go down both sides. Keep on forgetting to make sure you're in the thing there. Very wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. And then down the middle as well. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just to make sure that it's got enough on there. Okay, get my little strip and try and make sure I get it right up into the top there. I'll just push it in with my fingernails. Not supposed to use your nails as tools, but I do. I'll just get the scissors there to push that right into the corner there. Now, just making sure I'm close to the edge on both sides. Just pushing it into the rim there. Make sure it's nice and close and straight as you can be. And looks like perfect, perfect fit. I just have to press the corners because it's a bit of a round corner there. So I'm just pressing, making sure I press in and under, just with my little scissors. I'm sure there's a special tool for doing that, but my special tool is my nail scissors. And my nails. Okay, it's all pushed under. Just check that it looks right. It's all nice and flat, no bubbles under there. I didn't get any um, of the glue coming out, so there's our bangle. How beautiful is that? So what I'm going to do now is leave that to dry for um, a couple of hours, and then I'm going to put on some triple thick glaze onto it. Um, so I'll be back to show you that. Um, I'm going to make another couple of bangles, but in the meantime, I just wanted to show you, I'm just going to make sure I leave enough here because I'm going to do another couple of bangles. Um, one through there, one through there probably, one through there. So I'll use this section here just to make these um, cabochons. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the two cabochons and I'm going to put the glue on the back, find a nice spot that I like, that I think would look really nice. Probably through here where we've got um, the orange, the navy blue, a bit of the gold, a bit of the green. I want all the colours represented in there. And that line through there. This is the, the um, interesting part, isn't it? You know, just choosing the the piece that you think would give the best effect with my long one as well and some lovely I love these long um, necklace pendants because you get the best effects oh that's nice that bit there isn't it where you got all the swirly whirlies there's no gold in that though but that's okay it doesn't have to have the gold in it well, through there is nice, then it gets the gold plus a bit of a swirl in the green and a bit of blue. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing, so I won't hold you up um, any longer just going over that except that it, to say that I'm going to put the diamond glaze on there, stick it on once I've worked out where I'm going to be, and then I'll come back um, in a couple of hours to cut them out. See you then. Okay, so I'm now up to the next stage with my lovely little cuff here, which looks really so pretty. Um, I'm just going to be using the Deco Art Triple Thick Glaze, Gloss Glaze. Now, what this is 
The reason why we're using that is because we want it to um, stick on there without running everywhere. If you use a thinner varnish, you probably can, and I haven't tried it yet, but uh, oh, it smells. Oh. Um, just open the window. With the triple thick, because it's so thick, it stays on there without running, which is what we want to happen. Um, so I've got this brush. It would be good if I had a three centimeter brush and it would fit in perfectly and this isn't and the other one I've got's wider so I'll need to run around twice but with the triple thick you need to move quite quickly because it's so thick um, it's easy to sort of overwork it as well so I'm just going to get it on the brush coat all around quickly and then I'll do a final swipe both ways and let it dry as you'll see it's so thick um, so here we go so I'm just pushing, make sure I push it into the corners here. And if you get any of it onto the metal, it doesn't matter because once it dries, you can just kind of scrape it off. I'm just trying to make sure I get right into the edge. Now what I've got this on is just a little fitting from my turner. So it's just giving me something to hang on to while I'm turning the bracelet. Okay, now get down to the other bottom bit. As I say, you don't want to overwork it. Just put, put, popping it in. And I don't want it to be too thick either. So I'll do two or three coats of this just to get that really nice, well covered, glossy finish. Okay, so now just quickly, I'm going to do a straight run. Oops. All the way around. Again, and then do the bottom bit as well. As I say, a three centimetre brush would have been perfect. Okay, and that's it. I don't want to go back over and over it because um, that varnish starts to set up really, really quickly. So now I'm just going to let that sit like that for how long? Oh, my jar's getting jammed up too. Um, so I'll leave that for until it's dry, probably an hour or so. And then I'll do another coat and then I'll probably end up doing three coats of that. Okay, see you back here soon. So now we're doing stage two of making the pendants. As you can see, I stuck the cabochon onto the skin on a piece that I thought would be nice. And the little other round cabochon on a nice piece there. So now I'm just going to cut those out with my little scissors here. So literally, I find if you cut at a, about a 45 degree angle, it gets in nice and close. And with regard to these paint skins, I just um, keep them all in a loose leaf um, uh, plastic sleeves um, that I keep in a binder two ring binder and um, that just keeps them separated and then when I need them I just um, go through it and pick out the ones I want to use and they're all sort of separated and ready to go. I find it great with the grandkids too because I can just give them the folder and they just sit down there and flick through until they find a piece that they might like when they want to make some of their jewellery and um, yeah it's a great way to do it. So I've just trimmed this off as neatly as I can. Any of the glue that's sort of squished out is now getting cut off anyway. If there is any glue on your actual capuchon, you can just literally just um, scrape it off. It just comes off. So that's that little one, which is rather pretty, I think. And then the round one, same thing, just gonna cut around that and this is the same way that you can do earrings as well if you haven't got cabochons the right shape for your um, whatever you're making then you can just cut out a skin and put it into the tray 
and then put resin over the top and just dome your resin. Um, I won't be showing you that today, but maybe I can do another one another day showing you how to dome the resin over. But today we've got the cabochons. Which is by far the easiest way to do it. A lot of what other people do, um, instead of sticking the cabochon onto the skins, if you haven't got the skins, you can just actually um, dip the cabochon straight into um, some wet paint that you've poured down and then um, just let it dry that way and then just stick the cabochon onto into the tray. So um, you can do that too. We've got our little round cabochon. Just going to make sure it fits in there and which way round I want it to go. Oh, I quite like it like that actually. Kind of looks um, like a little gold leaf and that looks like another leaf and then the flowers off the stems, doesn't it? I didn't mean it to look like that. But that's what that looks like to me. A couple of leaves and then the stems and then some flowers. Okay, so I'm going to stick it in like that. So I just get my trusty diamond glaze. I'm just going to put not too much. I want it to just sort of spread around or just put a little bit around the edge, not too close to the edge. And then that will spread to the edges anyway. Hopefully I've got enough. And anything that comes out, I just use a baby wipe to wipe off. And if it dries on there, then you just um, scrape it off. It's no problem at all, as long as you don't um, scratch your cabochon, but you can very gently just scrape, scrape it off. I'll use my fingernail, which of course you shouldn't do. So in it goes. Give it a press. I usually hold it for 10 seconds or so. And then I'll just put something heavy to sit on top of that and leave it for 24 hours before wearing it. So as you can see, that's what it's going to look like, which is really pretty. Didn't get anything coming out there. Looks like it's all very smooth, nothing oozed out. So I'll now just get um, something heavy. What have I got? Anyway, I'll find something heavy just to sit on top of that and um, that will help it to set for the next 24 hours. Just going to put a paint jar on top of it. That'll hold it. Okay, so the next one is a little long one. Same thing. I'm just going to put a bead of the glue right down the middle. Oops, put a bit too much and that's going to overflow because I've gone too close to the edge. But I'll show you how easy it is. You just wipe it off. Um, so this one, I'm decided I want to do it that way. I think that way. I want the heart shape at the bottom. Yep, that way. So just going to pop it in there. Give it a press, and as suspected, it's oozed out. So I'll just get a baby wipe. So I've just got a baby wipe, and I'm just going to wipe around the edges just to get off any of the excess there. At least you know if you've got excess that you've got enough in there. I'm just wiping, making sure the cabochon's nice and clean. Okay, so I'm just gonna get another paint tin and pop that on top of that. and leave that to sit there for 24 hours and then we'll be all good to go. So I've done a second coat on my of the triple thick on my um, bracelets here as well. And as you can see, it hasn't quite dried yet, but they're looking absolutely beautiful. And I'll probably only do those two coats. I don't think I need to do a third one. And the other one. So they've turned out really beautiful. Oops. Was I out of view then? Hopefully not. Yeah, they've turned out really, really beautiful, as you can see. How lovely are they? 
So I can't wait to wear those. I've got a wedding to go to on the weekend and they're the colours that I've um, chosen to go with the dress I'm wearing. I'm only going to wear one of them, of course. But um, yeah, so that's how you do those beautiful cuff bracelets out of paint skins. So hopefully you enjoyed this one, guys. Um, and I'll certainly come back and do um, one of the ones where we're going to dip the cabochons into the paint. We'll do that in, in a couple of weeks' time. Okay, any questions? Don't hesitate to ask in the... Um, down below in the comments and I'll get back to you. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.